Hi everybody, David here from Living Tech. Thanks for joining me. This past winter I created a YouTube video covering the installation and review of a power frunk module for our Tesla Model X made by the company Handshow. Before installing that module we almost never used our frunk but now we use it all the time and the module has worked flawlessly since then. So the company contacted me again to see whether I'd be willing to review their kick sensor for the Model X. Uh, with this sensor you wave your foot uh, sort of underneath the trunk and uh, it opens the trunk hands free. I agreed to do the review uh, with the understanding that as always I'm going to give the bad with the good and that was fine with them. So uh, that's what we're reviewing here today. Now I've already installed the module so to save you all some time I'm giving my conclusions up front. If you're considering installing it though uh, please stick around to watch the entire video because I think it'll be super helpful to you. Instructions were provided at the Handshow website which were pretty good and with this video you shouldn't have a problem installing this at all. So the installation went smoothly with only one exception. I couldn't for the life of me find the connector that would provide the 12 volt power to the sensor. Uh, I say for the sensor because there are actually two 12 volt inputs to the system. The first is accessed via the included harness. So once you sort of plug both uh, sides of that harness in, you're good to go. But a second always on 12 volt power supply is required because the sensor requires continuous power whether the car is on or off. The first one's only live once the vehicle is powered on. Anyway, because I couldn't find that connector in my vehicle, I decided to run my own wire from the sensor to the OBD2 port at the front of the car. If you want to run through on how I did this, you can see it in the video where I spliced the sensor power wire into an OBD2 harness that I had previously made. And to make one of these harnesses yourself, you can check out part two of my Blackview dash cam installation video series. I'll include a link to that in the comments section below. The company learned what I did and if I understand right, they're considering changing their, their own module to the way I've done it. Uh, to simplify installation for the installer. Again, everything else is perfect with this module, so I am super happy with it. Hancho has given me a code actually that I can pass on to you to get you 15% off this and any other module you purchase from them. My code is David1Tesla, no spaces, all lowercase. Okay, so for those of you not sticking around for the installation part of this video, thank you for tuning in. It's incredibly helpful to our channel. If you like this video, please click like. And if you want to see future videos like it, please click subscribe. And don't forget to click the notifications icon to be alerted to future video drops. Thanks again. Having a trim removal tool set is extremely useful for this kind of work. There's so many options out there, but I found one on Amazon that's popular uh, and I've included a purchase link for that below. The first few times you torque on one of these tools and a panel clip pops, it'll seem like you broke something, but you get used to it quickly. Uh, using these tools prevents you from damaging your panels by pulling on the trim the wrong way and breaking off clips. Just pop off. Another T20 here. So and then you just sort of push it. Rotate the screwdriver, it comes up. So you're good. You can either you can take them off or you can just leave them on. 
sort of do it both ways. The back comes off, unclips, and then you just slide the panel just a little bit, a few millimeters forward, and it comes right off. The instructions want you to mount the sensor right here. I have to do this a little bit differently because I use this trailer hitch all the time. Uh, therefore, I'm going to mount the kick sensor a little bit farther towards the passenger side. So I pulled this back. There's an orange flexible conduit. And below there, so I just sort of shoved my hand, I'll try and go from the side. Shoved my hand sort of here, but beyond this orange thing. And then sort of right underneath the latch, there's like this little, it's almost like a doggy door for, uh, for you to route wires. So I can't get this in there, but it's, it, sort of goes one way and not the other. So I got a fish and I just pushed the wire down and right away I was able to feel this tape. So just this through. Okay, so here I am feeding the wires through behind the panels. Uh, as you can see, there weren't really any difficulties I had. It's just, uh, it took a few minutes to do it, of course. Uh, to hide everything properly. Here you see the orange cable with the cord rather, which I had fed up with the help of the fish. Pulled that down. Uh, now next step is to get the double-sided tape, cut it, put it on the sensor, get back underneath. I had cleaned the, the surface where I'm going to stick the sensor. You make sure the sticker side goes up. Uh, and so now I'm on to the next part. All I care about right now is the 12 volts. Is that going to make it easier? Yes, I believe it is. So that's what is getting in the way of me getting this thing off in the first place. Get this has to come up and this slide down. Okay. So I've looked and I cannot for the life of me find this connector. They want 12 volts all the time. So I'm running a wire to the front. I got the power from my Blackview camera from the OBD2 port, which has power supplied to it all the time. So I will just take that cable that I made apart and I will uh, put in a T so that, uh, so, that we could get, um, so that we could get power to here and to the dash cam. So this lug, we're grounding to here, we're looking at this edge. So that red wire is the wire I said I ran up to the front. It was pretty easy to do it just under a couple of panels. Uh, instead of splicing right into that ODB2 cable, I instead got a Y connection for you know 12 volt cigarette lighter 
type um, uh, receptacle and I put the Y in so that I could splice into one side and then the other side uh, could just continue into the black fuse 12 volt plug. And that worked well. Um, it literally took me about five minutes to hook this up. So I just uh, stripped that wire back, uh, crimped um, a spade connector onto it. And um, that spade plugs right into that uh, T or that splice that I that digs right into the uh, power wire of the of one side of the Y. Panel pops right back on and that's it. Okay, so just a quick test to show that it works. Um, you don't actually have to sweep your foot like I'm doing here. You could just kick right underneath the sensor. I just wasn't sure exactly where the sensor was. And that opens and closes the trunk, by the way. That's it. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you next time. Okay, I have, I have another idea. I'm going to just gently put this on the ground. It should be cool anyway. Oh, perfect shot, actually. Is that a perfect shot? Yeah. Now, you, unfortunately, you're going to have to walk that way. Try, try walking over and putting okay, it down. Too fast. Okay, I had to give it to him. Does he have to go kind of under the car? Yeah. Okay, Darwin, stay. He'll stay for a little bit. Darwin, stay. I'll go over here. Not tall enough, eh? He's not gonna go under the car. Okay. How about if we put it under the car? Yeah. Put him we'll under the car? The TR under the car. I mean you're gonna need to borrow a smarter dog, I think. <laughs>